Hi. Hi. Welcome to the Rainbow Kitchen. I'm your host, Christine, and today I have a special guest host. Hi, I'm Jen. Jen and I met while studying Chinese medicine together. She brings to the kitchen a lot of culinary experience. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? I do. I have a culinary degree from New England Culinary Institute in Montpelier, Vermont. For years, I was a caterer and owned a bakery in Bend, Oregon. I switched gears and decided to get my master's degree in Chinese medicine, which is where I met Christine. I am now um, getting a master's degree in Western nutrition uh, through the Naturopathic College here and adjunct faculty teaching Chinese nutrition at Oregon College of Oriental Medicine. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so you can see Jen was a natural choice to have on the show. Thanks, Christine. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. um, so today we're going to be cooking for the winter season. Mm -hmm. It's cold. It's cold outside. Winter belongs to the water element and is dominated by the kidney organ. Mm -hmm. Winter is the time of year where cold dominates and the chi of the body travels inward in order to circulate around the vital organs to protect them against cold. One thing that happens with the cold is that it can cause chi to stagnate and it slows down circulation. Mm -hmm. So we want to eat foods that are warming. Yes. We want to eat spicy and aromatic foods. Yes. And also some foods that have a sweet flavor in order to tonify chi. Yes. Nourish the spleen. And nourish the spleen. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So today we have a wonderful spread for you. We are going to make a delicious sweet potato and beef stew. And then Jen is doing something extra special. She is making some warming and aromatic condiments in order to increase the warming and yang tonifying effects of the stew. Yes. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, this is the time of year <laughs> where it is appropriate, if you have a tolerance for it, to consume a small to moderate amount of alcohol yes. because it helps to regulate the blood. Yes. It helps to circulate chi. Yes. It helps to stimulate the mind. Yes. <laughs> and it just makes you happy. It does. So cheers to that. Cheers. So let's get cooking. So for the beef and potato stew, I am using three different varieties of potatoes because if you're using a lot of one ingredient, if you choose different varieties of that ingredient, you get a more complex flavor and a more complexity of texture. Mm -hmm. So it just makes the food more interesting. Yeah. So I selected a garnet yam and a jewel yam because we're a pair of gems. <laughs> and then also your standard sweet potato. Uh, when you go to the grocery store, you're going to have different choices, different options for what's available, also depending on the time of year, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. What I recommend is just buying three different types of potatoes. If you're not sensitive to nightshades or regular potatoes, you can include a regular potato. I tried the recipe that way, it's also mm -hmm. really tasty. But today we're using sweet potatoes. Mm -hmm. So whatever you have available to you is great, and play around. If you see a type of potato that you've never eaten before, be adventurous. This is a great way to try it because it's all going to melt together in the stew and be delicious anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. And then for our choice of stew meat, many grocery stores will have stew meat already chopped up. You can either mm -hmm. buy it pre-packaged or a lot of places have it behind the meat counter. You can definitely buy that and that will work just great. I prefer to use chuck roast um, because there is a good fat content and it keeps the meat really moist in the stew. Mm -hmm. I get really bummed out when I have a yummy stew but the meat is dry. Yeah. It kind of defeats the purpose. Yeah. 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 So yeah. by using the chuck roast, we're ensuring that we're getting really delicious bites of beef um, mm -hmm. in your stew. Mm -hmm. So the night before, I cut up the chuck roast into about one to two bite pieces because mm -hmm. I liked hearty pieces of beef in my stew. Um, and then I gave it a really generous amount of salt. And then I wrapped it all back up, put it in the fridge and let it sit overnight. This is something that you can let sit like overnight and then the next day until you're ready to make it for dinner. The salt helps to break down the meat so that it's more tender and so that it's gonna cook a lot better. Um, and also helps to improve the flavor. Mm -hmm. We selected beef because it's warming and then the sweet potatoes because it's a sweet flavor and then they're also warming. Mm -hmm. We're also going to add half a pound of shiitake mushrooms. Yeah. 
Now, mushrooms are warming, but they also help to stimulate the immune system, which is really important during the winter mm -hmm. because people tend to get sick. Mm -hmm. So keep our immune system strong. Mm -hmm. We're going to use parsnips, which are warming, and then celery. Now, celery is actually a cooling food, but because we have so many warm ingredients, it's going to help to balance the temperature. And celery, because it's salty, which is the flavor of the winter, mm -hmm. helps to break up some of that cheese stagnation. So it's also a good ingredient, even though it's not... It's strictly a warming food. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to be like over the top warming either. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just like with anything, it's all about balance. Right. Right. And then lastly, we're going to add some delicious red wine. Mm -hmm. I selected this label because it's called Partners in Crime. <laughs> and so, you know, it goes with that. <laughs> <laughs> And then we're also going to add some chicken broth. So we're going to put all these together. I'm going to show you how, and it's going to be delicious. So let's get started. So to begin the stew, we're going to start by chopping the parsnips and the celery, mixing them together with a little bit of salt and letting them sit. This is going to begin to develop the flavor so that we can have more of the aroma and the aromatics from the parsnips and the celery. Once you've chopped all of the parsnips and celery, place them in a bowl together, add about three generous pinches of salt, and then gently massage them together in order to combine the salt with the vegetables. Then we're going to set this aside and let the flavors develop while we cook the beef. Can you use any kind of salt? You can use any kind of salt, whatever you prefer. Mm -hmm. um, I like to use a salt that has a high mineral content um, just because it has a better flavor and you get more nutrients. Mm -hmm. uh, so today I am using the Redmond Real Salt from Utah. So will you need to rinse the salt off of those vegetables? We're actually going to just add it to the stew as it is because with the salt from the meat and then the salt from the parsnips and celery, we don't need to add any extra for the rest of the recipe. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. So we're going to set this aside and we're going to start cooking the beef. Right. So I have two pounds of chuck roast right here that, like I said, chopped up the night before and then uh, salted pretty generously and let it rest overnight. So we're going to start with our stew pot on the stove over medium heat. And we're going to add a couple tablespoons of oil that has a high smoke point. So today, we're using avocado oil. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna let the oil heat up and then we're going to brown the stew meat on both sides. And then we're going to remove it from the pot as it browns and then cook the mushrooms oh. before adding the steak back in. Oh. As the meat browns, we're gonna take it out and kind of do it in shifts like that because it's too much meat to brown all at once. We want to make sure that there's enough room in the pot so that it actually gets a nice brown on it mm -hmm. and doesn't steam it. Yeah. So we're going to start and you're just going to gently, carefully place the meat. Make sure that there's enough room in between the meat so that it can breathe. I love that sizzling sound. Yeah, that's a great sound. Mm -hmm. So as that browns, you're going to want to use a utensil, like a fork or tongs, to flip the meat so that you get a nice browning on either side. All right, once both sides of the, of the meat are brown, you're going to remove the pieces and let them rest on a plate. Be very careful cooking with hot oil. Adjust the temperature as needed. And then repeat the process until you've browned all of the meat. So the purpose of browning the meat is not to cook it all the way through because chuck roast is a tough roast and it needs to cook for a long time. We're browning the meat to start developing the flavor so that again we get a richer, more complex flavor with the stew. Mm -hmm. So once you've browned and removed all of the meat, then we're going to use the same oil we cooked the meat in and we're going to brown the shiitake mushrooms. Over medium heat, we're going to add the mushrooms to the oil and we're going to cook these till they're nice and brown, probably around 10 to 12 minutes, depending on the temperature of your stove. You want to make sure to stir as you cook so that we don't burn the mushrooms, we just want to brown them. All right, once your mushrooms are brown, then we're going to deglaze the pot with about a cup of red wine. Just go ahead and pour it right in. And a little extra for you. And a little extra for me. And a little cheers to us. So we're just going to reduce the wine till about half. So that we're going to end up with about a half a cup of liquid. It's not going to take very long. All right, that looks good. So now we're going to return the beef to the pot. Very gently, be careful not to splatter. You can use any kind of red wine. You, can, you probably want to stay away from sweet wines mm -hmm. uh, because it would just 
be too sweet of a flavor for yeah. the stew. Yeah. I'm using a Cabernet Sauvignon, which pairs really nicely with beef. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you don't know much about wine, ask people at your grocery store um, mm -hmm. what's going to be a good pairing with beef. Yeah. We're going to add about half a tablespoon of black pepper. And then we're going to add a cup and a half of chicken stock. And that's going to slow down the simmer for a minute. So you're going to layer the stew and then let it cook for about 45 minutes. So the beef is going to sit in the liquid and stew in the liquid. And then the steam is going to cook the vegetables. After 45 minutes, we're just going to give it a simple maybe one, two, three stirs and then let it cook for another 15 minutes so that the flavors all cook and melt together. Mm, that's brilliant. So we're adding the parsnips and the celery. So you're going to take your sweet potatoes and we're actually going to leave the skins on because the skins have extra nutrients. Mm -hmm. We always want to think about what's going to add more flavor to the stew. Mm -hmm. So I wash these with a little bit of mild unscented soap, just a little bit and some water. You want to scrub the dirt off, make sure it's nice and clean. And then we're just going to cut the ends off and cut these into large chunks because they're really going to cook nice and soft. Mm -hmm. So by making them, making them big like this, they're still going to hold some of their shape. Um, but because we're cooking it for so long, part of it's going to disintegrate into the liquid and um, start to thicken the stew. Oh. Another reason why I like to use multiple varieties of potato is because we're going to get a contrast in colors. Mm. And because we are the rainbow kitchen, mm -hmm. we like to eat our colors, we like to eat a diversity of colors. Mm -hmm. All right, once you've chopped all of the potatoes, you want to make sure that the pot is on a low simmer. You want to have some bubbling, but not like a rolling boil because we don't want to cook out all of the liquid. Mm -hmm. We don't want it to burn before it's done. So we can still hear a nice bubble. Cover your pot and then let cook for 45 minutes. So next we're going to move on to Jen and our lovely condiments. The first condiment that we're going to make to marry with our beef stew are some candied chestnuts. Mm. These chestnuts are um, pre-cooked, pre-shelled, and they come in a bag. But you can also, if you're really ambitious, you could also get chestnuts in the shell, roast them, peel them, and then have them in this way. This is just a much simpler and quick way to make them. So right here you have the simple syrup, the spiced simple syrup. And this has clove, cardamom, star anise, cinnamon, some fresh ginger that I just chopped up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So the cardamom has this pod like this, but inside of the cardamom pod has little seeds. What I find to be really helpful with the mortar and pestle is to take a few that you're going to put into this simple syrup, but throw that in there and then just give it a crush all together the clove, the cardamoms, the star anise, the cinnamon, and just kind of break it up a little bit. But you can see there's this outer mm -hmm. husk. Oh yeah, and that really released a lot of yeah, the aroma and the flavor. aromatics yeah. of it. Mm -hmm. And then we'll just we poured it into here, into the simple syrup. We're just gonna let it simmer a little bit until it's starting to get kind of viscous almost. Yeah. Like yeah. it's thicker than yeah. water, maybe close to like oil. Mm -hmm. And so we have all the aromatic herbs in there. And then we're gonna just let this um, sit for about 30 minutes or so before we start to do anything with the chestnuts themselves. This just really, really consolidates all of that aromatic and strong flavor into the simple syrup mm -hmm. and you can take a little bit off and use it in your coffee at Christmas time. Oh, or, that sounds so good. <laughs> yeah, it's delicious. It's really delicious with all these five spices. And, and so we're going to um, take that and strain out the spices here. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it smell so good? It smells so good. Oh my gosh. It's like all the holidays wrapped into one little cup. After discarding the spices, we have this, um, just the simple syrup, and so we're gonna pour that right back into this pan. And then we're going to take our chestnuts, 
Now chestnuts are definitely a wintertime food because you know you think about roasting chestnuts and we have songs about roasting chestnuts. <laughs> we do. What are the medicinal properties of the chestnut? So chestnuts are really warm and sweet. They also nourish the kidneys as well as the spleen. They can help to disperse the cold which is really helpful in the winter time, dispersing cold and dispersing that cheese stagnation that can build up from the cold as well. Mm -hmm. So, and they're especially good for the kidneys. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna let this simmer for probably about 40 minutes. And um, what we're looking for is for it to be thicker consistency and kind of the chestnuts become almost translucent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're really beautiful. I mean, you can eat them on the on their own as well mm -hmm. as a nice little dessert. And right at the end, we'll add a little bit more of this fresh ginger, just to kind of to really brighten up the flavor. Mm -hmm. And these chestnuts, you can see maybe you can see that this syrup is almost like honey, like warm honey. And then these chestnuts have kind of become slightly translucent mm -hmm. and really really infused with it's like almost like little gems aren't they mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they're just gorgeous just gorgeous so next we're going to make a horseradish cream it's a non-dairy vegan type of cream that you can use on top of this beef stew. A horseradish is one of the most warming, acrid, it dispels wind cold, which we have a lot of in the winter time. Mm -hmm. It helps to dispel dampness because it is very acrid. Mm -hmm. Also, it just has a really wonderful flavor. This is what uh, horseradish looks like fresh. It has this kind of outer, harder bark that can be kind of dirty. And so you just want to cut it or peel it off. And then I chopped it into small little pieces to put in the mixer. You can also use just jarred horseradish. So the other amazing ingredient in this is hemp seeds. And hemp seeds you can get online, and I think many grocery stores are now carrying them. Mm -hmm. But these are, these make dressing creamy. It's amazing. So instead of using dairy, you're using hemp. Right, That's exactly, incredible. I know. So the hemp seeds are amazingly full of vitamins and minerals and the other ingredient I'm using here is pumpkin seeds. Mm -hmm. These pumpkin seeds I've toasted already. And you know, again, with the seeds in the wintertime, it's a wonderful time to eat seeds. Mm -hmm. We're planting for the season, for the year to come. Mm -hmm. We're starting to build that up. And the other things, I have some sesame oil in here, toasted sesame oil in here. And then I have, this is a mature vinegar, Chinese vinegar. But you can find some mature vinegars, uh, again, at the Asian market. Just kind of try them and see. They're really relatively inexpensive. They have all have kind of really different smells to them. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. Yeah, it's not quite sweet like a balsamic. It's more of like an earthy flavor. Mm -hmm. And so I like to use this in place of, um, like to uh, kind of brighten up the flavor. Mm -hmm. Now, if people don't have access to an Asian grocery store or if they don't know where one is located, what would be a good substitute to you? Apple cider vinegar is fine. Mm -hmm. uh, balsamic would be okay, although balsamic will add a little bit more sweetness than you might want. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you have it, you can use it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People can play around and see what they like. Yeah, for sure. I have a Vitamix. And Vitamixes are not usually the thing that most people have in their kitchen. I just love my equipment. It does an amazing job at making creams and dressings and things extra, extra smooth. Mm -hmm. But they're also pretty expensive and if you don't have access to one, you can make it in a bullet blender and you can also probably make it in a food processor or a regular blender. It won't come out as creamy and as smooth as this will. Ready to get started? Let's do it. Okay, I'm going to put in about a medium-sized clove of garlic that I've already chopped up here. This is about one inch of horseradish, of this horseradish, about one inch. So if someone was using a, like a pre-made horseradish, like horseradish yeah. in a jar. I would start with about a tablespoon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's about the same as that. And this is about three quarters of a cup of hemp seeds. Just toss those in. And then so the toasted pumpkin seeds, I'm going to put in about a half a cup of those. 
And then we're gonna add approximately a half a cup of water. Okay, make sure you have the lid on tight. So I started blending it, have it partially blended, and I'm going to add about a tablespoon of the mature vinegar and about a tablespoon of this toasted sesame oil. About a teaspoon of the salt. Let's see. Mmm. Oh, spicy. Yeah. Oh, Jen, that's so nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's got that warm, nutty toasted from the pumpkin and the hemp. Mm -hmm. And then the horseradish really comes through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice and creamy. That's lovely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm just going to pour this right into this little bowl. This will probably keep just about a week in the refrigerator, not too much longer. So, so next, some condiments. We're going to make this amazing chili oil that has uh, chili peppers and fermented salted black beans and garlic. So all of these things are really warming for the winter time. So this chili oil is a spice, also a spice chili oil, using the similar spices to the chestnuts, but it will have a completely different flavor profile. Um, what we're All right, so now we're ready to put it all together. Yeah. I'm so excited. Me too. So we're gonna start with the stew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so here's the chestnuts. Right, so you know, I'm actually, I'm just gonna go right ahead and add yeah. it to the stew. Okay, yeah. good for you. Yeah. I'm gonna start, cause my favorite is chili oil. Mm -hmm. This is my fave of all time. So I'm just gonna put it in here. Do you want some of this as well? Yes, okay. I'm definitely gonna take some of the horseradish cream. I'm gonna cheers okay. you. Cheers. Cheers. To the winter time. To the winter time. And the sweet potato. Mmm. Mmm. Oh yeah. Wow. I really hope that you try this recipe at home. It is really simple. It is. You know, really when it comes down to it, not a difficult thing to do. Nope. Really nourishing during the winter time, really warming, an excellent meal to share with friends. Mm -hmm. The recipe makes enough to share with, you know, five, six people. Yeah. Have people over, have a party. Have a condiment party. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And, you know, everyone's going to everyone's gonna be your friend. If they weren't before the meal, yeah, they were they're going to be your friend afterwards. after the meal. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so, Jen, thank you so much for joining me today. You're it was so really welcome. a pleasure. Mm -hmm. It's been really, really fun. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, I had a great time. And I want to thank you for joining us today at the Rainbow Kitchen. And as always, wishing you all the best health and the most happiness. Thank you.